I'm really excited to make this video and I'm hoping that you guys will support me because I got the opportunity to add a really cool dimension to this channel. And if you watched a couple of uploads ago and saw my new Moosehead Minute section, you probably have a bit of an idea of what I'm going to talk about. But for everyone else, I was given the opportunity to get a press pass for a CHL game, specifically for the Halifax Mooseheads who play in the QMJHL. A lot of you know this, but the CHL is Canada's highest junior hockey league. It's separated into three smaller leagues, the OHL, the WHL and the Q. The Mooseheads play in my city of Halifax, so today I want to talk about the game and also my experience. I'll put timestamps on the screen if you want to jump around. I'll start with experience first, and I've been going to Halifax Mooseheads games since I knew what hockey was. Pretty much everyone in the city knows the Halifax Mooseheads theme song, which I'm going to play now. Mooseheads! Battle of the boards and the puck comes loose. Defense falls back, but it's just no use. Charging up the wings, turning on the juice. Slap shot, shoot, slow. You just can't stop the moves. Moose head. You just can't stop them. Moose head. You just can't stop them. Charging up the wings, turning on the juice. Slap shot, shoot, slow. You just can't stop the moves. I've been going to Halifax Mooseheads games since I can remember. The team was established in 1994 and is one of many junior or historical hockey teams which have called Halifax home. For example, the Halifax Citadels were the AHL affiliate team of the Quebec Nordiques and they ran until 93. The Mooseheads, by the way, have actually rocked Citadels jerseys before, which is so cool to me. There's also the Nova Scotia Voyageurs and the Oilers, which were older AHL teams. The Mooseheads are very popular in the city. They're usually at or near the top when it comes to QMJHL attendance and there's usually a pretty big difference between the top two or three teams and what's below. At the game I was at there was an attendance of 9,000. They pretty much maxed out the rink's capacity. Part of the reason is that Halifax is just such a big hockey town and the Mooseheads are really the main attraction but also the fact that the team has been good not only now but consistently for a long time. There was a down period after they won the Memorial Cup but this year, the Halifax Mooseheads are second in the queue, and throughout the years, the team has seen some really incredible players. 2012-2013 was probably the most legendary season in Moosehead history. The team incredibly won 58 out of 68 games, losing only six in regulation, and they were loaded to the brim with top talent, including, of course, Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Drouin, but also Mackenzie Weger, which people seem to forget, Martin Furk, who's played over 100 games in the NHL, and others. The team was backstopped by Zachary Fucali, who was drafted by the Canadians and has only unfortunately got four or five games in the NHL. The way the CHL works is that each of the three sub-leagues have catchment areas. The Q gets Quebec, the four Atlantic provinces, and New England. Don't call it the Maritime provinces. Newfoundland doesn't like that, by the way. It doesn't include them. Unsurprisingly, the Mooseheads have seen lots of both local players and others from the region play and go on to have really successful NHL careers. For those who don't know, the CHL is one of the major routes to the NHL in a very popular one for Canadians especially, and some Americans, although the NCAA is becoming increasingly more popular. The Mooseheads have retired three numbers, Alex Tongays, Jody Shelley's, and J.S. Chagares, but some other notable former players other than the ones I mentioned already would include Brad Marchand, Nikolai Ehlers, Philip Zadina, Timo Meyer, Nico Heischer, and more. I definitely try to keep track of Mooseheads, and it always makes me happy to hear them making waves at a high level. So that's sort of the basics, and as I said, I've loved the Moosehead since I was a kid. If you live in Halifax and you're in any way interested in hockey, you've probably been to a hundred Moosehead games. It's just such a fun atmosphere, especially for kids. I'll get to this year's current Mooseheads in a minute, but I want to talk about my experience because it was really cool. So basically I reached out, I got the press pass, and I thought I knew a lot about what we used to call the Metro Center, what's now called the Scotia Bank Center. You actually enter through a secret entrance, you go through security, there's sort of a secret elevator that takes you up to the press box. I had never been up there before, although you can always see it. It's in sort of a weird location compared to press boxes and say an NHL arena. A lot of you noted this when I posted the picture. It's like net side at the end of the rink, whereas press boxes are typically near the red or blue line. That's just sort of because of the size of the Metro Center and how they added on boxes afterwards. By the way, the box is named after Pat Connolly. He was a famous Canadian journalist and broadcaster. He worked out of Nova Scotia and wrote for the Halifax newspaper, at least the one that was around when I was growing up, the Chronicle Herald. 
Herald. In the press box, there are journalists, there are NHL scouts, there are members of the Mooseheads executive, and there are players. It's a pretty cool experience to be up there. I kind of chose a bad seat. Next time, if there is next time, hopefully, I'm going to choose one a bit more off to the side to get a better view of the net closest to me, but it's actually a really great way to watch the game. You do miss some of the details you get from being in the lower bowl. However, one thing that I noticed, and I was super surprised by this, is how different things sounded from up there. I don't know if it's because of the acoustics, but you can hear everything. A gaggle of children trying to get the attention of Hal, the Halifax Mooseheads mascot, a player slamming the bench, even yelling. It's kind of weird because you're so far away from the action, but it's very, very immersive. I spent much of the game taking notes, and that's sort of a process, but very cool. Definitely different from watching the game in person. Going to a Mooseheads game is so fun because the Halifax crowd is unreal. People got a glimpse of that during the World Juniors. I'm not going to say that every Mooseheads game is like a gold medal game, but the crowd is always into it. If you want to get really rowdy, go to the top of the Upper Bowl, but tickets are reasonably priced and it's a fun experience. Plus, one thing I really love about the Mooseheads is that the Metro Center, I keep calling it that, is actually called the Scotiabank Center now, is right in the middle of downtown Halifax. If you want to go out afterwards, Argyle Street is right there. If you want to roll down Siddle Hill like my buddy Charlie did when he came to visit a few months ago, you can do that. Halifax is truly an incredible city for nightlife, for entertaining, and a lot of people, especially when there's a student discount, will use a Mooseheads game as sort of a pre-thing before they go out. But about this season, the Halifax Mooseheads have been great, and that's another reason why the games have been so much fun. The team currently sits in second place. In 40 games, they have 28 wins, 7 losses, 4 overtime losses, and a shootout loss. The Mooseheads also have a ton of scorers. The top two points leaders in the NHL are Jordan Dumais and Alexandre Doucette, both on the team. Dumais, who I've been really impressed with this year at the games I've went to, is a Columbus Blue Jackets prospect. They, I think, may have gotten a steal with him. He was 96th overall in 2022. The other drafted player on the Halifax Mooseheads is Zachary LaRue. He's only played 15 games this year, but has 25 points. He was actually suspended for the game I went to, so I didn't get to see him play. I've only seen him play a couple of times, but have been impressed overall. This was also my first time seeing Alexandre Doucette. He was picked up at the trade deadline because the Mooseheads are hoping to make a deep run for the Memorial Cup. They will, however, have to take out the Quebec Ramparts, also one of the quote-unquote major Mark Q teams. They are an absolute wagon this year as well. 32 wins and 41 games for 67 points total. Total. The game that I saw was Halifax versus Sherbrooke. At the time, this was the battle for second overall, and it was a great game. I was thinking about recapping the game here. I already did that in my Moosehead Minute, though, so because this video has gotten pretty long and I've got a lot of editing to do already, I'm going to take that Moosehead Moment segment and put it in at the end here. Now, before I do, though, I really want your guys' feedback on this video. I'd love to keep covering the CHL, the Q, and the Moosehead specifically, so your support on this video means a lot, but also, be honest, give me feedback regarding structure, format, whatever. My thinking is that a lot of people would enjoy this content, but may not be aware of what the QMJHL even is. So I do think I'm always going to have that Moosehead Minute section at the end of videos, but I also think that this format of video is pretty cool as well, especially because I can talk more about, you know, local culture, what major junior hockey is like. But if this video doesn't do well, or if you guys don't like the format, listen, I don't need to make it. Just let me know. Hopefully I can get more of this in the future. If not, I mean, I'll still probably probably cover the Mooseheads somewhat, but again, let me know your thoughts down below. All right, let's roll the Mooseheads minute. Minutes, maybe. Better name. With that being said, I want to end this video with the introduction of a new segment, the Moosehead Minute. I've been lucky enough to get press credentials for my local CHL team. I'm going to use that, cover CHL news, and especially the Halifax Mooseheads. And tonight, it was a battle in top QMJHL teams. It was the Halifax Mooseheads and the Sherbrooke Phoenix. Winner gets second position, and in this game, nine of the top 20 QMJHL QMJHL point scorers and the top four goal scorers were active. And this was an interesting one. I thought overall the Phoenix played their game well from a systems level. There were at times like in the middle of the second where they have the Mooseheads hemmed into their zone for two, three, four minutes straight. And the shots, which ended up being 48 to 21 for Sherbrooke, reflected this, I think. So what was the final score? Well, the Mooseheads had an incredible goaltending performance from their goalie, 
Mathis Rousseau. Just unbelievable the entire game. In the first, the Mooseheads had some really active movement on the power play. The captain, Attila Biesco, was the recipient of a beautiful cross ice pass and finished far side. I thought Sherbrooke responded to this in the wrong way. They got physical, but too physical to the point where they were giving up chances. And at 12.09, the Moosehead would score a second. And Russo, at this point, made some really incredible saves to keep the lead to nothing. The second, I would say, it was more Sherbrooke controlling the play, although the Mooseheads did have a few really good chances. But halfway through the period, Jordan Dumay would recover a puck, bouncing off the goalie's pad, and would notch it top cheese on the backhand. Going to the third, Dumay would score an insurance goal after being left completely wide open, but Russo would finally get beat short side 13 minutes into the period. After a scrap energized both teams, Josh Lawrence would score one more to make it 5-1. Jacob Mellison would make it 5-2, off an assist from Canadian World Juniors player Joshua Waugh. And Sherbrooke would play it pretty aggressively with a score of 5-2. They'd pull the goalie with about three and a half minutes in, and the Mooseheads would put it away. Lawrence scoring his second, this time with an assist from the player of the game, Mathis Rousseau, to finish off 6-2. Now, tomorrow I may talk more about the game, but I also want to share my experience for what it was like having a press pass in a sort of unique role. Hopefully I can do it more. I would love to do these Moosehead minutes or CHL minutes throughout the entire season. So if you enjoy this, please consider liking and leaving a comment. That's all I've got. Until next time, see you soon.